Okay, I'd like to call the uh, City Commission meeting to order of June 20th, 2017, and ask you all to please rise and uh, say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Our first item of business of approval of the agenda. Do we have any corrections? Yes, uh, I'd like to remove the closed session. I'm waiting for information from our pension system. Once I uh, receive that, I will schedule another closed session. But at, as of today, I don't have it. Okay. We have a motion to approve the agenda as amended. Mr. Mayor, I'll move we approve the agenda, removing item 15, closed session. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We have an agenda. First up, uh, or next up is approval of the minutes. We have uh, two sets of minutes from the study session as well as the regular city commission meeting from May 16th. What are you talking about? I got, uh, we did a Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> okay. Do we have a motion to, uh, <coughs> thank you. Second. Thank you very much. Any comments, changes? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The minutes are approved. As far as I know, we don't have any communications. Okay. We do have our county commissioner with us this evening. Good evening, everybody. For those that might be watching, I did bring in a bunch of new county directories that will be here in City Hall, and I gave them all to the uh, to the city commissioners, and here's one for you, Tom. Oh, absolutely. So, Thank you. Thank you. Um, things going on. August 9th, and I will bring more information to you. The county commission, along with the county, will be offering some training on how to do business with Oakland County, particularly for small businesses, so that people can learn how to bid and do business. Um, we want to develop entrepreneurs servicing county um, government. Want to remind people that on the Oakland County website, www.advantageoakland.com, is an apprenticeship um, list of how do you find other types of jobs, salary ranges. There are a lot of jobs in Oakland County that cannot be filled because they, we don't have people with the requ requisite skills. So this is a collaborative effort between Oakland Community College, Oakland County, different unions, other work um, employers to create this apprenticeship book and it's expanded from where it was before. I continue to serve on the Citizens Advisory Council of the Regional Transit Authority and there is no decision as to what they're, what's next as far as they, um, they're mulling over do they go for a millage in 2018, 2020? But in the meantime, the RTA is the entity that receives federal transportation dollars instead of SEMCI. And they've decided to invest additional money into the program that's run by the Area Agency on Aging 1B, which is My Ride 2, and um, to make it a regional. Uh, connected uh, transportation system beyond the Region 1B six counties. It will expand into Detroit and Wayne County. So this is a service that people can either call 855-MY-RIDE-2 or go online myride2.com. It's a network of lower cost transportation providers to service door-to-door -door service. 
and it's been very successful to supplement the smart buses. For example, if you are in, um, in the future, if you're going to a hospital downtown, you know, this ride system wouldn't take you there from Huntington Woods, but in the future it will be um, include Wayne County as well. So I think it's going to be very positive. In May, we hosted um, the, the Board of Commissioners had another Youth in Government Day. And I do hope that Berkeley schools will join us next year again. They used to come. And one of the issues that we're trying to work on is to find some transportation money. Because I know it costs money for buses. And some school systems don't have bus systems or don't have the money. So we're trying to do that. But it was a really successful Youth in Government Day. One of the things that we did differently was we broke the different students into um, different committees and they considered real life issues and had to argue for or against and speak before the group and pass a resolution. And some of the examples should police officers wear body cameras was one of the topics. Another top topic was should we impose a tax onto soda pop in Oakland County, which is not healthy food to, for, you know, earn money toward other health programs, invest in other health programs. And I have to say the students were amazing and wonderful and really demonstrated speaking leadership skills. In my district, I, would, I had students from Oak Park and Ferndale. So I hope that Berkeley, I'm gonna do some outreach next year. <laughs> And I hope they'll come back. So um, that's it for this evening. Do you have any questions for me? Yes. Uh, does my ride operate on Saturday and Sunday? My understanding is that they do. You know, you have to book it ahead of time. You know, you can't just say, okay, I need it in an hour. Usually 24 or 48 hours. Oh, that's yeah. what um, but, you know, it, it was, it's been wildly successful. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Public participation. Now is the opportunity to speak to an item other than uh, what is already on the uh, list of items on the agenda. Do we have any? Seeing none, public participation is closed and we'll move on to the regular items of business. First is a matter of considering the recommendations from the Senior Advisory Committee, Housing Options for Aging Population Study. We discussed uh, this a little bit at our study session meeting last week, and uh, I don't know that we, we came to a final decision on it, so I'm, I'm gonna throw a suggestion out there and, and see uh, if the commission wants to go along with that. Um, I would recommend that we form a, a committee to, uh, to study um, the, the findings of the Senior Advisory Committee of uh, two members from the Senior Advisory Committee, two members from the Planning Commission, and uh, one member from the City Commission. Uh, what I would ask is that the City Commission give them some direction along the lines of some specific details as to what they would propose for senior housing um, with with an emphasis on the perimeter of the city because that's what we found from the community was the most acceptable, uh, both in the public and the private sector. So public being Woodward Avenue, Coolidge, uh, the possibility of 11 mile road, and then from a, from a, a private standpoint, what any type of development would look like on the city hall, public works, public safety property here. And um, also incorporate universal design uh, because that uh, met with overwhelming uh, enthusiasm from everyone that we talked to. Um, and then look at incentivizing both universal design and any, any uh, public uh, development of senior housing and if that would help to effectuate it happening and what would the effect be on the city of that. I would, because uh, I have been very involved uh, with the Senior Advisory Committee over the last two years, I would also volunteer to, to be the City Commission uh, member of that committee and 
report back to uh, the city commission as to the update on that as we, as we progress. So, anyone else have any comments or ideas? Mr. Mayor, um, I think that would be um, a fine next step. I think um, it would be important to me that we don't uh, spend any more money at this time as far as uh, um, an organized study and the expense that we had with the $8,000 the last time. Um, that would be one concern that I'd have. Um, the other thing is that um, in, in considering a municipal complex, I think that we need to be really careful that we don't just pigeonhole it into a senior um, housing development because it is possible that, you know, with uh, discussion with the residents that maybe that would not be the only or the best option for um, a public-private partnership, uh, but that perhaps during the course of investigating um, some of the alternatives, maybe we broaden the scope. Um, and that just goes back to the whole idea of we can't really um, guarantee that the residents that would um, be seniors now would be able to get into those homes. We can't guarantee that, um, that young families would move into the, the homes that the seniors are leaving. So I don't think we can um, you know, use that as the uh, particular excuse for having to do this because I don't think we can actually engineer that kind of transaction. Uh, but if we keep our options open in the discussion, I think that would be, um, that would be fine. Mr. Mayor? Mm -hmm. I don't have an issue uh, supporting the formation of a committee Happy to see you step forward and are uh, willing to represent us on that committee. Uh, I, I uh, am glad to hear that uh, the committee will be considering multiple locations. My original concern was that uh, the focus would be too narrow. And so uh, I'm pleased to see that um, you know, the committee will be able to look at, at various locations and come back uh, with a recommendation that the commission can ultimately adopt not and that I would ask if there are any expenses related to this committee that that they come back to the Commission uh, for review and approval Certainly. Commissioner I, I like what I heard with one exception which you would remind that the Municipal Life would participate also I do have the background in the uh, I, I, I'd like it to raising money I'd like to keep it to an odd number of, of people um, so that when we have well, votes, it be an odd organization. Or <laughs> but uh, I, I will guarantee you that I'll keep you updated and, and call on your expertise if you decide to choose me. I think the uh, committee is a fine uh, idea. I just think we need to <coughs> begin to put forward more um, concrete. I mean, we're, what we have here are a variety of concepts and concerns. Uh, one of the uh, problems with um, bringing these kinds of issues to the forefront is um, if people, residents, don't know what this could ultimately look like, it's, it's very easy for somebody to say, I'm against it or I'm for it. So, you know, one thing we need to be able to show people is what this is going to look like at some point. In other words, you can't ask people to buy something, and I use that term um, loosely, in other words, accept a proposal unless they saw it and they can visualize. Because <clears throat> when you say the words senior housing, sometimes that conjures up images of tall, low rent, uh, or more affordable, if you will, type facilities. Uh, that is not what anybody that I'm aware of has ever contemplated here. If anything, we're talking about expensive housing stock, I think, would, or, or, or high quality housing stock might be a better way to say it, that a lot of people, that there's a huge pent up demand in the city for this. And it's just difficult when you don't show the residents a, a definite picture and say, here, this is what we have in mind, then like I said, then you get people who think, well, they're gonna build these granny pods or things like that. But there has to be forward thinking 
and there has to be planning because this kind of project, we're not talking about something that's going to happen in the next year, or the next two years, but if you don't plan, you're, you're going to be left a very short uh, at some point. So I think uh, having this committee is a fine idea. I don't uh, support this idea of, I mean, we're talking about major, major uh, projects here. Uh, however, they end up being financed. They're very important large scale projects. So I'd rather not be penny wise and dollar foolish when we're talking about projects on this scale. We owe it to the taxpayers to give them as much information and as much concrete information as possible and in this area because it's so specialized and unique, it's beyond what we can do ourselves. So I, I, you know, at this point we don't have a cost proposal to deal with, but I'm just saying that going forward to come up with, you're gonna at some point have to have a rendering, at some point you're gonna have to have something to show to the residents to say this is what it would look like or a new city hall or whatever the project would be that we've discussed, you have to be able to say this is what it will look like. That's why whenever a new building or anything is being proposed, you almost always see these renderings so people see it and they say, boy, that's beautiful or that's nice or I, whatever. But otherwise, it's being you're being asked to respond to an abstract concept. But I think the idea of the committee is fine. I think five people is enough. Uh, we don't need more than that. It doesn't, we don't get any, anybody's free to have input into it. So how many people serve, I, the smaller number, the better. So I support it. Okay. Our city manager has been the liaison to the uh, senior advisory committee through this whole process. Is, can we ask you to uh, be the staff representative to be this happy group to. as well? Mm -hmm. We want uh, the Senior Advisory Committee and the Planning Commission to uh, to nominate two people to, to represent them. I think that'd be appropriate because they're gonna, um, well, we don't know what the, probably be evening meetings. Yes, <laughs> I would think so. <laughs> it will be evening <laughs> meetings. Uh, yeah, I think that um, they would be in the best position to uh, figure out who has the, the time uh, okay. to serve. Uh, I would suggest you consider adding uh, Elaine Zach. You were responsible for the Silver Tsunami study at the county level? Yes. We'll, we'll certainly get our county commissioner's input on things. Uh, she's always more than welcome to attend the meetings. I would love to be a consultant, but I don't want to serve on another committee right now. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. And I am the Oakland County appointee to the Area Agency on Aging, so I have a lot of experience, and, but I'm here in an advisory capacity, <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anyone? Uh, my move, move to support the proposals put forth by the um, Senior Advisory Committee and in combination, uh, the mayor's proposal for a five-person uh, committee consisting of two members from the Planning Commission, two members from the Senior Advisory Committee who's in, who, sh who should be selected by that committee. They should select who's gonna serve. And, and I support the idea of the mayor being our um, liaison to that committee. Any public comments or questions? Any other questions or comments at the commission? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, we'll, we'll start uh, talking dates and times once we have some names from the other two committees. Yes. Mm -hmm. Item number two. <coughs> Who wants to? Lead us off here. You want to take it right away? Over right away? Um, I don't think I have. An, I don't think I have anything to add from what I went through last month at the introduction. Uh, no changes have been made to the ordinance since the introduction, and so it's up before the commission for consideration of adoption. Do 
we have a motion? Mr. Mayor. I'll move that uh, City Commission adopt an amendatory ordinance to amend the City of Huntington Woods Code of Ordinances to replace in its entirety Chapter 28 peddlers, solicitors, canvassers, and handbills to adopt a new Chapter 28, uh, Articles 1 through 6, to regulate or address peddlers, solicitors, canvassers, and unsolicited written materials and to provide for penalties for violation thereof. Report. Any public comment? If I can add just one thing before David gets up. We did remove the section on the unsolicited materials, so that's not the end of the ordinance. Yeah. Car? Not putting stuff on cars, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, the section that we had before has been removed. It was in the paragraph. David Sloan, 8050 Lincoln. Just a question of construction. Were you going to be repealing Ordinance 589 or were you just interleaving and no, pulling this, off? No, this repeals and replaces in its entirety. So this is also a repeal of Ordinance 589? That Correct. Was, okay, yeah. thank you. Any uh, comments or questions from the City Commission? I think it's, uh, sorry. Mr. Mayor, I think that the, um, you know, it's still an ordinance that to me is um, somewhat um, lengthy, be perhaps beyond what it needs to be, but I'll defer to Ms. Rosati's uh, expertise of how this type of ordinance has been drafted in, in other cities. Um, and I, I do think it's important to note that the biggest source of controversy we had the last time was the um, non-exemption. This was before the amended bill, the non-exemption of um, individuals canvassing for political uh, uh, purposes, which is now specifically called out in those individuals exempt under section 28.4 section uh, 24 28.4 a section 8 so um, we, we cer it's certainly a reasonable uh, a reasonable ordinance at this point and just point of clarification that we have exempted all canvassers so any form of first amendment right. speech not just political Any other comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next up, uh, consideration of the adoption of the ordinance. This is the second reading of the, the collection and disposal waste ordinance, correct? Correct. And then the, after the first reading, we had a lot of discussion between commissioners, and I tried mm -hmm. to sort of take the flavor of you know, who was saying what and try to make some changes in this to cover it. I still don't know whether there's any consensus on this or not, but this is where we are based on the last meeting. So the, the new language is containers shall be placed at the rear of the house in the event of physical characteristics of the property resulting in the inability to place the containers at the rear of the house. The containers may be placed at the side of the house no further forward than the front corner of the house. Commissioner. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to move the ordinance to amend Chapter 30, Solid Waste, Article 2, Collection and Disposal, Section 30-23E, Container Maintenance to provide for the throwing of waste materials on private properties prior to removal and to provide for container maintenance and to provide a penalty for violation thereof. And this replaces any previous ordinance. Second. Any public comments? David Sloan, 8050 Lincoln Drive in Huntington Woods. Uh, I did voice my uh, 
comments on this ordinance two months ago, but I would like to reiterate this. The city manager and, uh, and one of the commissioners had found out that uh, there was really only one complaint in this area. I am one who is not in favor of extra ordinances if it's not necessary. I think, I believe that our residents really know how to take care of their trash and their recycle container. The big, the big problem is the recycle container because a lot of houses, there are a number of houses, including mine, where it will not fit within the ordinance that you're passing. I've heard from a number of people who say they are going to turn their recycle bin back in because they can't comply with this proposed ordinance. Unfortunately, they're not real small and they are difficult uh, um, sometimes to keep behind the front of the building that you've indicated. I, I believe that we need to, or I ask this commission to rethink this area and not pass this, maybe have more discussion on it, but I don't think this is necessary. I think we have enough ordinances already and we have enough work for our, our city employees who are already overworked. So I thank you for, my, for your time. Comments or questions from the commission? Commissioner? Yeah, um, it's nice to have no ordinances and it's nice to have no rules. We can speed, we can do whatever the hell we want. Um, every single one of our neighbors speaks to this issue. In Berkeley, containers shall not be placed on front porches, front drives, or front yards prior to placement for pickup. In Ferndale, place that at the rear of each building or structure at a place that is reasonably inconspicuous and away from places occupied by other persons and from the streets. Oak Park must be stored behind the house. Royal Oak within the rear yard setback. Southfield, kept and stored in such a manner so as not to be visible when viewed from the street upon which the residents fronts. This is not something that's ridiculous. It is something that every single one of our adjacent communities says. One of the problems that I read with uh, the development of the zoning ordinance uh, was the discussion on uh, the six foot, three foot fences and some people saying it should just be a discussion between neighbors, and others saying you should have some standards. In this instance, what we've proposed is standards. It's not at the back of the house where the majority of the other communities say. It's at the back of the house or the side of the house. Uh, when we do our housing, we have a seven foot setback on each side. Obviously, there are going to be a few houses that won't fit that, but it becomes important and valuable to this community. This is not a poverty community. It's an extremely wealthy community. And the value of homes is a function of what they look like. And the rest of our communities, and when I grew up, I didn't grow up in Huntington Woods. I grew up in Northwest Detroit, uh, in Sherwood Forest. And it was uh, more expensive homes. And there was no garbage can that was in front of the house. Um, when a person came to me and complained, it seemed logical. I called the city and I said, can you check on this? And when the inspector went to that house, the person told him straightforward, there is no rule in this city about where we place garbage cans. I would hope you vote for this. 
Um, very often we get bullied from a single person in this community. And all we are doing is following a standard which is done by every other community and deals with the quality. When, when, when you deal in zoning, we don't have siding. We push for brick. We're a lot different than other communities. I would encourage you to vote for this. Follow what, the, uh, what other communities are doing. Let's get out of the laissez-faire, no rules, no standards. I know the people that come before the Planning Commission resent the fact that we tell them that they can't do it this way. They don't like the rules either. Any other comments? Just a question. Um, for those situations where there are no alternatives, is that what the violation of the subsection uh, may be abated by the city? I mean, so the it's just a, up to the discretion of okay. all those in favor aye. Aye. aye opposed motion carries item number four is a matter of authorizing a request for reimbursement from Oakland County for funds spent to combat the West Nile virus in the amount of uh, is it $820.88 or $849.20? Uh, it's $820.88. We spent $849 per case, and we needed four cases. We're going to be reimbursed for the $820. Mr. Okay. Mayor, I, I'm in favor of our city manager moving for reimbursement from anyone. <laughs> <laughs> so I would move that uh, we approve this uh, resolution. Yeah, I'll second that. All right, any public comment? Any comments or questions? The commission, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Matter of appointing Amy Sullivan as our representative and Jay Mater as our alternate to the South Oakland Resource Recovery Authority, better known as SACRA. So moved. Second. Any public comment? Mission comment or questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. A uh, matter of an appointment of Amy Sullivan as a representative and Jay Mater as our alternate to the Southeastern Oakland County Water Authority, better known as SACWA. Second. Any public comment? Commission? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Moving right along, oh, item right. number seven. <laughs> <laughs> a matter of consideration of agreement with uh, pavement technologies for asphalt rejuvenation. This, this is a proposal to apply a, a sealant to roads that are have been uh, reconstructed recently. The list of roads is on the, the back of the agenda item. The idea is to prolong the life of our roads, um, and we could do it as long as the roads are in relatively good shape. Um, so um, we've, we've done it in the past, but it's been a while since we've done it. Um, given the fact that we've, we've reconstructed uh, new roads since 2010, we want to get a jump on it and make sure that we can prolong their life as long as possible. Residents on these streets will be notified prior to the application being placed on the road. They'll be asked to remove their cars from the road so that work can be done on the, on the day that um, is scheduled. Uh, but driveways will be accessible uh, the day that the treatment is put down. Okay, the total uh, projected cost of this uh, program is $47,778.95. Do we have a motion to approve? So, so moved. So far. Any public comment? comments or questions? Yes, Mr. Mayor. I noticed that uh, Kingston between Scotia, <coughs> just going from Scotia East is all spray painted uh, yards in the road and, and we did receive a letter indicating that consumers energy was going to be coming through and, and replacing not only the, the gas main itself but also um, the, the service lines. 
are any of these streets, do we know, uh, would, would, the, would the gas work interfere with the uh, sealing of any of these streets? Well, that's a, that's a, that's a good question. I, I do not know that. I don't think so. Jay and I went over this tirelessly. That said, though, um, we obviously don't want to do that work where we know that this is going to be disturbed. So given the fact that, I, that um, the work is going to be done this summer, I think we'll have time to um, review that once again and make sure that those roads that are affected by what would be consumers coming through and doing their work are not here. I don't believe they are, Commissioner, but I, I can't tell you 100% certainty. Uh, we've, re we've reviewed it well, but I, I think that's a good point and one that I'll take with with me. Thank you. Commissioner. Does the city have a, a schedule from consumers as to when they're going to do roads? Because, I mean, if they then cut yeah, into the road next well, year after they seal it, yeah. it's going backwards. And let me answer that question this way, is that we typically work with consumers pretty well to see to it that the road, that the work that's going to be done via consumers precedes any road work that we're doing. So in any given year, we tell them where we're going to be. You do your work first. We'll deal with the sidewalks and the rest of that after the fact. So, so no, they don't have a defined schedule. They may in the metro region. However, on a very small, introspective Huntington Woods basis, we work with them <coughs> hand in glove to see to it that they're not coming after us for doing that before. Can you then advise them that this would be approved? Oh, absolutely. We certainly will. Yeah, we have a good relationship with them and typically uh, uh, do that anyway. Because yeah, I know on Mudlow, the south side of that road mm -hmm. is uh, mm -hmm. seriously cut mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure for where. Well, I'm not saying I'm, you know, and and you know, I'm not saying that we've had our issues from time to time. But I will tell you that in most terms, we do pretty well in terms of dealing. Any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item number eight is a matter of consideration of entering into an agreement to lease the purchase of a John Deere 410 backhoe. <coughs> this is a 60 month lease, I believe it was, yes. with a dollar buyout at the end. This is a uh, backhoe that we've had since 1990. It's had several major repairs. It now has some engine damage that warrants replacing the engine. Just makes sense to go ahead and replace the backhoe rather than put a new engine into a piece of equipment that's well, that old. And this particular uh, agenda item here is to finance the cost of the backhoe. Right. This is a budgeted item in the next budget year. And so our notion here is always to go out to the marketplace to determine what the best <coughs> route is to handle the cost of doing this. And, and that's what you're seeing here. So we want to make sure that uh, when we purchase money to do anything, we do it in a public vein. And so we went out to the marketplace, and as it turns out here in this particular instance, John Deere Corporate or Capital Corporate Capital Industries has done better over private financing. So, so are, are we technically approving the amount of finance interest paid over the? It really five is years? really this business, it, and I don't know if that it says in the motion there an agreement to lease purchase. Typically, I would come to you with an agreement to finance, but this actually is in fact that to purchase. It's only because they are one and the same. So I could, in fact, go to Kansas State Bank to finance this and so do that separate from the purchase. Is, this the, particular is the total, instance, total cost actually 105000 That's right. 83980 right. not the 8150980 that's on the that's, agenda? That's correct. So, so, I, so I misspoke in that resolution. You can change that. The interest cost and the, and the total purchase price, including interest payments of 100 and whatever it is. Five thousand eight thirty nine eight. Yes, thank you. This is not. I thought I understood it clearly. 
Now so, you're confused? Very. <laughs> you're an accountant. You want to explain this? The total cost of the backhoe with interest is $105,839.80. Yes. We're paying for it. We're leasing to purchase it with a dollar buyout, so we're yeah. paying for it over five years. Yeah. All right. I apologize for that, uh, Commissioner Olsman. So. I mean, you got to slow down on these matters for slow me. Slow down, Selena. baby. Slow down. <laughs> Except certain <laughs> aspects of math, Ms. Rossetti. All right. So moved. Second. Thank you. You're welcome. Any public comment? Any other comments or questions at the commission? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next up, we are item number nine. We're replacing a condensing unit at the library under the emergency purchase provision. May. Actually, it's not uh, the emergency mm -hmm. purchase, it's sole source purchase, right? Yes. Is the agenda said? Okay. Uh, <coughs> it, earlier this year, we did do an emergency purchase of a condenser at the library, um, and there happened to be two condensers. The, the one that's left is 34 years old. It's on its last legs. As long as the contractor is here replacing, we're the first uh, condenser. We're asking you for authority to go ahead and replace the second one rather than come back in a year or six months and, and have to do that on a, um, on a on a separate basis. We save a little bit of money doing them both at the same time. So this is considered a sole source purchase given the fact that we have the contractor already on board doing the first condenser. So moved. Support. <coughs> Any public comment? Seeing none, any comments or questions from the commission? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item number 10 is something we do annually, approving the banks, brokers, and dealers used for city deposits for the next 12 months for our investment policy. Are there any changes to this list from the previous? Amy asked me that uh, earlier today, and I suppose I should show you what the original list is and what the new list is, but typically it doesn't change very much. We might add a broker dealer or not, as long as they prescribe to what the investment policy requires in the state of Michigan requires. In this particular case, I think the only change in this list this year, other than a spelling error here or two, is UBS Financial Services. But what I can't do is I can't make the assertion or assumption that we're going to do work with any particular broker dealer unless the commission, unless we update this list. Mm -hmm. And the investment policy requires us to do so, and I'm very uh, careful about such matters, so. Yeah. Thank you. Motion to approve. Commissioner Jenks, thank you. I can any public comment? Any other comments or questions, Commissioner Jenks? Um, with JP Chase there, is it possible for us to request Chase Bank uh, to follow past practice and allow us to use the parking lot uh, to bring the green fees? Or I think it was the day or two before. Yeah. I will do that certainly outside of this, but that's something. Yeah, we don't. We don't, we don't do anything with the parking spaces. Um, my recollection was that uh, Chase does not um, sell or rent out those spaces, and so our public safety department did use it as, as a base in the past. So if we can ask them. We, uh, Amy, we use the big parking lot for a uh, band and a celebration. Not in several years, you know. Yeah, I know. The, the city hasn't done any activities for the dream crew since I've been here. However, we do like to have a place for our public safety to set up and, and have an operating area on Woodward. So we will ask them for permission to use their parking lot mm -hmm. for that purpose. No, I, I may make one more comment about this. The reason I gave you the investment policy is because this speaks the investment policy with respect to uh, looking at the vendors who we do business with. I call them vendors lightly. I mean 
brokers and dealers and banks and so forth. And the last thing is that this has been vetted by Plant Moran and other um, uh, auditing firms and probably in the region is one of the most um, tightly controlled investment policies around the area. I was very careful about that and uh, feel very strongly that not only because of the vetting of it, but also that the policies and provisos in here are far more strict than any communities have. I know the way these banks gobble each other up. Number 11's already gobbled up. Number 19, probably. Yes. You would even type yes. Mm -hmm. uh, personally, uh, Mr. Mayor, I would say I am not a fan at all of number 14 on this list, but I'll defer to uh, Mr. Lehman's judgment. Uh, if he's comfortable with them, then. Hold on, uh, Commissioner. Let me take a look here. Number 14. I'll defer to your judgment. Uh, if you're comfortable with them, then I'll go ahead and uh, vote for it. Uh, nor am I. Uh, but I will tell you that once again, that, uh, uh, and I'll leave you with this thought that um, it is up to the commission to review the list. It's up to me to see to it that we are very specific in doing the work we do. Uh, based upon a, an absolute construct of this policy. And uh, in doing so, we hold ourselves substantially harmless against loss. So not to mention at the end of any given year, we only have 2 or 3% in any one investment vehicle. Um, and uh, so I thank you for that comment. I'll certainly take that under advisement. And uh, uh, thank you. Do we have any information on uh, loans made to residents or mortgages made uh, to zip code 48070 uh, from any of these uh, financial uh, providers? I typically don't take the time because of limited time to review that. I think that uh, it is possible to do so, but <coughs> I don't see that right now given the size of the portfolio and what we can do that uh, anything can be gained in that regard. That said, uh, it certainly can be done. And well, uh, I, I don't do it today. We ought to, in some ways, if the interest rate is uh, not that much different, right. give some respect to uh, those financial institutions that are willing to uh, invest in Huntington Woods as opposed to those that stonewall people or that stop mm -hmm. their business. Uh, you know, my goal is simply as per what the policy states, that is to protect the dollars we have at the city. Uh, and so my goal is the safety security of, irrespective of any other piece of this, that's the number one thing. Not interest rate, nothing else. Not whether they have mortgages here or not. I just think that uh, the residents uh, need the ability to also access money and that we should encourage any uh, financial mm -hmm. fiduciary and I, I, uh, that we yeah. put money into to basically mm -hmm. make sure that they're investing in the city and helping the city out. And I would be, adding this. Right, and I'd be happy to do that outside the policy. Mr. Mayor, we have no authority, jurisdiction, uh, even remote interest in telling, you know, other banks or financial institutions what they should or shouldn't do. This is a matter of just protecting city dollars and what our city has. And those kind of other policy issues or suggestions are so extraneous to that purpose. And there's, we have no such authority. None. And that's exactly why, Commissioner, as you know, and, and I'll say again, that we have a very tight investment policy, and thank you for that comment. Any other comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries.
next item number 11 is a matter of uh, establishing a maximum occupancy rating for City Hall. I don't know why it says core City Hall. It should say four. But. So moved. Before, oh, let's talk. before we do that, let's have a quick discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, second. Pretty good. Second. <laughs> second. Second. Yeah. Yeah. Discussion. Yeah. Second. Second. Do that with item so, 10. Right. Now yeah. we have a motion on the floor. The it's commissioner been, it's is been made and seconded. I just wanted to indicate that the 80 person max is incorrect. It should be 99. Okay. Can, will you accept that? Yes. Well, and, and, and Amy, we'll maybe you ought to just oh, go ahead. Will you accept that? Yes. Change? Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now we're at 99. Why? We were increasing that because, I think, is what Tony wants to be. Uh, we are working with our plumbing contractor and uh, also worked with a um, uh, sergeant in public safety, and the plumbing contractor came up with the 80 number. It went into uh, the agenda item. Then she came back and she said she had miscalculated. It actually should have been 99, which is what public safety came um, up with. But we'd already typed up the agenda. That's I right. Never That's to right. Go it back was and simply an error. I, I, yeah. and, 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 and the reason for this is if we use federal dollars here, I don't want to be in a position where I've got to make up a number with regards to what this building can hold as far as occupants because it has to do with how you use doorways, restroom facilities, and things like that. So be very careful about using federal dollars in this case if we use block grant dollars to do this i don't want to hold this commission accountable because we didn't do what we should have done and that is determined to have an occupancy rating in the building yes uh i spoke with our city attorney before the meeting and i know you and i chatted uh, before the meeting regarding how the mac maximum occupancy would affect uh, any public meetings that we have and uh, based on the discussion with the city attorney if we do encounter and a uh, meeting where there's a lot of uh, uh, desire for public input oh, and desire enthusiasm <laughs> that we may have to uh, either knowing in advance move the meeting or mm -hmm. or adjourn the meeting and reschedule it to a facility that you know can better uh, mm -hmm. accommodate it so that we're not in any violation of the open meetings then. yeah rather than adjourning would it be a uh, Tabling that item well, that is, that is uh, well, is that I mean, it would what depend would on how you want to do it, but be. you'd eventually have to be located in a facility that could accommodate anybody who would want to speak on the item. So, yeah, even at the 80 amount, and I sat, I, I took a look at this to see when it was close, but it would work certainly at a hundred bodies given the use of the building and so forth. I think we're in pretty good condition here. There are not going to be many occasions where that would be the case. I understand the question, and I understand, Mr. Roselle, your concern. Any other comments or questions? All those in well, public comment? Okay. So about that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Agenda item number 12. It is a matter of considering a request by all community events to hold a 5K run in the Huntington Woods on November 25th of 2017. So this is an out-of-state organization. They're based in Illinois, and they um, promote uh, runs throughout the country, and they had approached uh, Huntington Woods to see if we would be interested in sponsoring a 5K run on Thanksgiving. Um, I, I indicated to the individual that there are four runs already that are automatically approved each year in the city and that the addition of another run would have to go before the city commission because you need to balance this request with the inconvenience that is sometimes caused to residents uh, during the run. It is my understanding that this is not a run that's that's not a member of the community that's asking to do this run or benefiting any anybody in Huntington Woods specifically. That's correct. Okay. Doesn't this also require the expending of resources, public safety resources, to ensure that these folks have a safe, uh, you know, way to get through the city on their runs? So, I mean, this if we we decide to do this for this uh, out-of-state uh, group it's not free and so that it's 
my understanding that it will cost us money to do this if we decide to do it. Yes, it would, and this is on Thanksgiving Day. So it would be a, a demand on a public service on Thanksgiving Day. What, what, what is, uh, why us? I mean, what is the, just for using the zoo as the base? Is that their idea? Yes. I would just, one other comment is that, uh, you know, Thanksgiving tends to be a day when folks are uh, traveling and, and, and uh -huh. uh, folks are having events at their homes. And, and I don't know what impact this could have on, on uh, Thanksgiving events, uh, family gatherings. I certainly do not want to inconvenience our residents on a busy holiday and, uh -huh. and impact significantly our, our public safety department on a holiday, um, you know, when resources uh, are, uh, may already be not up to what they are on a non-holiday. So I just, uh, I'm all about supporting charity. I've certainly run my share of 5Ks, uh, even did a 10K once, but uh, oh. I'm not sure that, that um, this is something that uh, I want to support at this time. Well, it does indicate that the benefiting charity is the local uh, chapter for um, ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease. Um, do we know that to be? Okay, I move that we just table this for the time being till we have more information about who it's for, you know, like I said, why us. I mean, on the one hand, I, I hear that I agree with Joe that, you know, maybe enough is enough. On the other hand, if it is a local charity that is benefiting from it, let, we can take this up at the next meeting. There's no rush. This We're not on the verge of Thanksgiving here. So. Can you clarify what more information that well, you can It says, so it said, is expected to be. Right. Okay, now to me, that does not, that is not definitive. Confirmed. Okay. And I want to know, if we're going to do this, and I don't, I don't mind, uh, yeah, it doesn't, I don't find these runs to be uh, problematic at all. I, I would think on that day, it's going to probably be a pretty lightly attended run, <laughs> frankly. Uh, no. Turkey yeah. Oh, not turkey. <laughs> I know, no. Right. Uh, Ms. Ms. Rosati, first of all, with all due respect, I'd like to see video of that. Second of all, second of all, second of, second of all, this isn't the turkey trot. The turkey trot's downtown and it tracks, you know, 100,000 people or whatever they get. Well, it's going I know, to be but we don't trot. have enough information. I just move we table. And just from a legal standpoint, I think if you're trying to get additional information, I think we'd want to discuss the fact that we would accept, expect them to pay for public services and also that we would expect some sort of agreement, uh, indemnification from them for their event and oh, proof of you. insurance to cover any no, liabilities not. that might arise. This time I agree with Ms. Rosario, yes. Put it in writing. <laughs> Sorry. As well as notification to all residents yeah, just affected by the road. Mm -hmm. Which is our typical, typical policy. Yeah. If Commissioner Olson made a motion to table, I'll second that. It's fine. Till the July meeting. Okay. We have a motion on the floor to table. Are all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And we will be back on the July agenda. Reports and minutes. We have six sets of reports and minutes. Uh, we have a motion to receive and file. So move. Second. Thank you. Any comments or questions? I, I have a comment. I, I'm sure you all read the finance report, but I'd like to draw to your attention that the last line that says the finance department is proud to announce that we have been awarded a certificate of conformance from the Government Finance Officers Association for our financial practices and reporting for the period ending June 30th, 2016. Hats off to our finance director. As always. Yeah, we always get that. That's a good thing. You always say it out loud? Yeah. Yes. Well, thank you. Until he satisfied that we've said it <laughs> enough, yes. Yeah. Keep well, talking. Well, we will never say it enough. Yeah. 
Um, I do have a concern. Um, on the library advisory on planning, there is no indication that a commissioner was present. Is that an error, or the commissioners are not attending the meeting? Commissioners are liaison members of those boards and, and don't necessarily attend every meeting. But it would be nice to know either that they were there or they were not there. Uh, I, they obviously weren't there or they'd be shown as okay. present. Reports are received and filed. We have a motion to uh, accept uh, warrant number 325, subject to full audit. So moved. Support. Any public comment? Commissioner comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. On to the city manager's report. A couple of items from the recreation department that are coming up. Uh, first is this Saturday, the Run Walk Boom. Were you going to talk about that? No. no? Okay. Uh, the one mile starts at 8:30. The five 5K starts at nine. You can register throughout the week at the recreation center. They're also taking walk-in registrations uh, beginning at 7:30 on Saturday. Uh, Fourth of July is coming up quickly. There's a, a whole host of activities. You can find that in the summer edition of the Hometown Herald, which is on our website. And lastly, the first home swim meet for the Hurricanes is this Thursday, so the pool ah. is closing at 4 o'clock. Residents will be able to use the Pleasant Ridge Pool after 4 o'clock, but they'll need to show ID to show residency, prove residency. That's it. Any questions of the city manager? Thank you very much. Commissioner's remarks. Start with Mayor Pro Tem Olson. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just have a couple of items. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, um, my colleague made a comment when there was discussion about the ordinance um, involving the trash cans, and, and I just want to say this. Uh, as a almost approaching eight years on the city commission, uh, I never feel uh, bullied at all by comments by residents, whether I agree with them or disagree with them. Um, I'm glad when people come forward uh, with opinions and viewpoints, whether, uh, as I said, it's not my job to be in accord. It's my job to sit here and listen and take into consideration whether those comments have merit. So I'm very glad when members of the public, whoever they might be, come forward and tell us what they think and why they think it. So and I, I'm not easily bullied. Uh, <laughs> to say the least, and uh, I regard that as uh, good for public discourse, not bad. On a more, uh, on an additional note about uh, public comment and First Amendment, I had a very disturbing conversation with a resident this past week who uh, advised that someone uh, had put uh, dog waste uh, on her uh, property next to one of these uh, hate doesn't live here signs and not only did that, but placed it in her child's swing, which is available from the street. Now, uh, speaking of not passing more ordinances, I did speak to Carol about what more can be done about it. And uh, I think this, this kind of conduct uh, takes it beyond merely offensive into the realm of malicious destruction of property. Um, I think anyone who has a small child is, is reasonable in using a swing without running uh, uh, anti antibacterial materials over it. You know, I find this kind of, if you, you don't agree with me, that's fine, but um, you have no right to uh, put hazardous or dangerous material on an on a object that a child uses. And, and uh, obviously nobody knows who does this. Uh, it happened a lot earlier this year. Uh, I had a call from another resident who had a Hillary for Clinton sign, Hillary Clinton sign in front of her house and somebody put dog waste on that. Same thing, um, you know, if you don't like her, that's fine, vote for the other guy. Uh, but uh, this kind of, uh, this is, a crim in my view, is, would be criminal trespass and could amount to malicious destruction of private property. So uh, I would just say that uh, 
if we if we have a prosecution in this area, I am hopeful that uh, the city will uh, exercise its discretion and try to make an example out of that kind of hateful conduct. I, I think that is just hateful. That is uh, has no place uh, here. Finally, on a lighter note, uh, I would note as the city manager indicated, we have the run walk boom, which pays for our, the city of Huntington Woods fireworks. Uh, it's a citizen initiated campaign to make sure that we have the annual 4th of July fireworks, which everyone looks forward to. I've read with some amazement some of the local cities around here don't seem to want to be in the fireworks business. We're going to be in the fireworks business because our residents, I believe, expect it. It's the signature day in Huntington Woods throughout the year. Uh, and it's one of the things that helps make this city uh, as great a place as it is and as hospitable a place as it is. So uh, noting that we are fiscally responsible and pay for it with the citizen involvement, uh, I wish everyone a happy 4th of July and hope to see everyone at the parade and at the fireworks. Thank you. Commissioner Jenks. If you're not in the parade, uh, make sure you're watching. Um, I am concerned and will be con continue to be concerned. Huntington Woods is a unique city. Um, I don't consider it like other cities. I consider the quality of what we provide in the way of services and programs, community involvement, and uh, citizen involvement at a much higher level. Um, I do expect that we will define rules of procedure in the city. Um, I was at a uh, conference in California. Don't worry, it was not, there was not a penny spent by the city, but I was there representing SEMCOP. And uh, one of the specific <coughs> areas that they did deal with is the uh, control of water and how you deal with that, whether it's retention when it's a dry period or how to control flooding. Um, we need to start looking at many of these issues and not say, not in my backyard, or I don't want any changes, I don't want any rules or any uh, regulations. I will continue to bring up issues, whether it's um, where you put your garbage cans. Um, a lot of times running government is not just common sense, you do set up standards. Uh, common sense in water is not what we practice here. Uh, common sense as it relates to fertilizer. Uh, in this city, we do not put down uh, fertilizer that is a risk for children. Uh, we do things differently here. I consider that uh, that difference is the uniqueness uh, that makes Huntington Woods a, a city of trees, homes that are brick, not siding. Uh, the value of homes, when they go down, they go down. But when they go up, they go up much faster, I think, than many of our neighbors. Uh, I will continue to uh, push for ordinances that don't over control anyone but at the same time protect every single individual. Um, common sense, I would think, is the way that you run things, but the reality is, if someone can't check and say, what are the rules? Uh, how do I do this? Where do I do this? Where do I put this? How do I build my house? How do I expand it? What do you expect from me? Uh, we, we get into conflict citizen that came to me and complained was very, very upset. And it's not just one citizen, but I get comments from people all the time, uh, including when they watch here on television. And the usual thing I say to them is, don't you have anything better to do uh, or watch another channel? But uh, happy 4th of July. Let's represent what that holiday uh, 
reminds us of. It's uh, democracy and what we stand for. And yes, I've taken more than three years. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Iverson. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, I just wanted to publicly uh, thank Commissioner Olsman for his work in uh, getting the, the uh, fence repair along uh, Rackham and Ludlow. I had a lot of residents that were contacting me to, to find out when that eyesore would be taken care of. So I just wanted to say thank you publicly um, and also let the residents know happy 4th of July and I bought a lot more candy this year. So <laughs> <laughs> I, should, I should last to maybe move forward. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Commissioner Roselle. No comments, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Um, I'll just uh, add that uh, look for the men's club uh, envelope that will be delivered to your home with an opportunity to buy raffle tickets. They'll also be selling tickets at uh, the concert in the park tonight and next Tuesday as well as the 4th of July. So and don't forget to support the, the club. Drawing the, the drawing will be held uh, at the, in the middle of the concert in the park on the night of, of the 4th of July. With that, I wish everyone a happy uh, Independence Day. Hope to see everyone as well on the, on the uh, parade route, and uh, we'll see you next month. Thank you. Meeting adjourned.